impedance and reactance diagram so impedance diagram it is a simplified equivalent circuit of power system in which the various components are represented by impedances the impedances which consist of resistance and reactance okay r plus jx we represent it as impedance z so this is your impedance we are going to represent a single line diagram in terms of a impedance diagram representing the impedance of the circuit r plus jx and this x represents the reactance and it may be of inductive reactance or a capacitive reactance and this impedance diagram is used for load flow studies or we call it as a power flow studies where we are going to apply this impedance diagram in power flow studies or load flow studies and approximations what are the things we need to approximate in impedance diagram while we are drawing impedance diagram neutral reactances are neglected so if it is a star connected system from neutral point we, need, we have to drown the system okay in some cases this neutral wire which consists of some reactants okay that type of uh, grounding we call it as reactance grounding this reactants in the neutral wire are uh, neglected in case of a uh, impedance diagram and second approximation shunt branches of equivalent circuit of transformers are neglected so in a transformer uh, specifically it is mentioned over here shunt branches so transformer equivalent circuit will be like this the resistance and uh, the reactance will be there and you will be having a shunt parameter so this shunt parameter can be eliminated or neglected while we are going for a impedance diagram so these are the two approximations now we are going to see how to draw the impedance diagram from the single line diagram so here it shows the single line diagram it consists of a generator transformer 1 then a transmission line then a transformer 2 then at the end we will be having a motor how to draw an impedance diagram for this circuit so this is a complete structure of an impedance diagram so here you can see for generator the generator having a resistance as well as the reactance r plus jx so we can represent like this r plus jx and the generator is a source so the source emf generated emf should be mentioned like this and it is a source eg this whole section we call it as a generator section r plus jx so like that we can mention is a transformer okay so transformer also it consists of resistance as well as the reactance okay so this section is the transformer section and you need to draw the equivalent circuit of a transformer equivalent circuit of transformer which consists of a um, resistance reactance and the magnetizing circuit like this component we call it as a no load equivalent circuit and this r and uh, resistance and reactance we call it as a magnetizing component so this we call it as a transformer impedance diagram then third one will be having a transmission line so how to draw it in a transmission line a transmission line can be represented it as a sh short transmission line or a medium transmission line pi network or t network okay so pi format or t format we can draw a transmission line equivalent circuit so here i have drawn in pi format okay so this is of the form pi network so reactance and resistance are there over here the shunt capacitance are present so transmission lines are represented like this pi network or t network then after transformer transmission line you will be having a second transformer so here also you can represent in a similar way then finally you will be having a motor so motor will be having a back emf so to represent the back emf you can put this point as an em motor induced emf and the impedance of the motor is represented by r plus jx over here so this is the complete diagram of a impedance from the single line diagram okay so now we are going to reduce this circuit based on the approximations what we made since the shunt current of a transformer is usually insignificant compared with the full load current the shunt admittance are usually omitted in the equivalent circuit of transformer so in the previous case if we have seen the transformer which consists of a shunt element that is a parallel element that is your magnetizing circuit okay so here shunt current that is a magnetizing current which is insignificant when compared to the full load current of the transformer so the shunt admittance can be omitted the current flowing through the shunt element is very very less when compared to the full load current so we can neglect that current so that the shunt component can be omitted in the equivalent circuit so further we can reduce this impedance diagram resistance are often omitted since the inductive reactance of the system is much larger than its resistance so as i said the uh, while considering the impedance is it equal to r plus j into x resistance plus j into the reactance 
when this reactance components component is very very large when compared to the resistance we can omit this resistance that is x is very very greater than r okay so then we can uh, omit this resistance so only the reactance component alone present okay, so this is the first case then second one loads which do not involve rotating machinery have little effect on total line current during the fault and are usually omitted so load which do not involving rotating machinery in the sense uh, other than motor motor is also acts as a load but it is not a stationary load it is a rotating load so there you cannot omit the motor but uh, instead of uh, motor if you are using a static load without any rotating machinery if you are using uh, that so that loads can be omitted in the impedance diagram then third one if we decide to simplify our calculation of fault current by omitting all static loads all resistance the shunt admittance of each transformer and the capacitance of of the transmission line so these four things we are going to omit first one is static load all resistance then shunt admittance of the transformer and in the transmission line we are drawn the capacitance the capacitance also we are going to omit so the impedance diagram reduces to a per phase reactance diagram now the impedance diagram become a reactance diagram here so your complete impedance diagram will be represented or reduced to a per phase reactance diagram like this now directly you can draw the reactance diagram by considering all the approximations what we made so the, here is a single line diagram the same single line diagram so how to draw the reactance diagram over here so simply for generator you can draw one reactance and the eg value generated emf okay so this is the reactance component of a generator then followed by transformer so transformer having one reactance then transmission line transmission line having one reactance then transformer 2 having one reactance then you will be having a motor motor having a reactance as well as the motor induced em of em okay so that's all so like that simplifiedly we can draw the reactance diagram so this is your complete uh, reactance diagram of a circuit given